Why use a state management library in Angular when you can just build your own from scratch? When you combine RxJS with Angular's dependency injection, it provides a powerful foundation for building your own state management system. That means you can get all the benefits of the Redux pattern, including the dev tools that you see here on the right, but you can create your own abstractions and conventions to reduce the amount of boilerplate code, plus you'll have a much better understanding of how your app works under the hood. Over the next few minutes, you'll learn how to use custom RxJS operators and multicasting to build your own state management library. But mostly, I just want to show you how this pattern works at a fundamental level. If you're new, like and subscribe, and grab the source code from angularfirebase.com. In case you're not familiar with the Redux pattern, here's a quick refresher. The whole idea is that we treat our app data or state as a global immutable object. The only way we can change the current state of the app is by dispatching an action. So that might happen on a button click, then the payload for that action will go to a reducer function to determine what the next state should look like. The store itself is an observable, so everything will happen in a reactive way. So anything that subscribes to the store will be updated with the latest data. The benefit of this is that we now have a one-way data flow that provides a predictable history of all the changes that occur in the app, so we can do time travel debugging and cool stuff like that. If we think about this in code, our current state is equal to the stream of actions and the function that reduces them. A reducer is just a pure function that takes in the current state and the action and then returns the next state. So let's go ahead and build this thing. The first thing I want to do is generate a service called store. And I'd also like to point out that I have Lodash installed. Not only will it dramatically simplify our code, but it will also give us better performance than we'd be able to achieve natively. So first I want to show you how our store service will be used in a component. One really important concept in Redux is that our components should be stateless, meaning they should only be listening to data from the store as an observable or dispatching actions. They shouldn't have any state of their own. So the service will provide the store itself and then also an action class, which will just give us a standardized way for creating actions. The store can be injected in the constructor. Then the cool thing about building your own state management library is you can make it behave however you want. So in my case, I want to be able to grab properties with dot notation. This differs from say NGRX where you'd use a callback function or a pipeable operator to select your data. Then there are three fundamental CRUD operations that you're probably familiar with if you work with NoSQL databases. The first one is set, which will completely wipe out the store and set it with new values. So if we want to reset the store, we'll dispatch a new action called set, and that will include the new data that we want to update. But we might also want to do a non-destructive update. For that, we'll create an update action, and then we'll tell our reducer to only update the properties that are contained in the data payload. And the last one is delete, which as its action payload expects an object property, and then it will delete that key from the store. Now remember, all of our data is just a global immutable object as an observable, so if we want to view it in the UI, we can just say store.state and then unwrap it with the async pipe. And then we also set up a method called select, which will select a specific slice of that state. And setting up that slicing is probably the most complex thing that we'll have to do. And then lastly, we'll set up a few buttons here just to dispatch our actions. Then the end result from the user's perspective is just this UI with a few buttons, and then when clicked, we get a full history of every state change that occurs. So every time we click a button, you'll notice that it changes the state in the UI, and then we also have an event in the Redux DevTools history. Overall, this is hugely beneficial for debugging and also a lot easier to test. Now it's time for the fun part. We're just here in a regular Angular service, which is our store service. I have a few imports here from RxJS and Lodash, then I'm creating my own custom action class just to standardize the way actions are dispatched. You could also make this an interface and then create a different class for each action. That's the way it's done in NGRX. But an action is super simple. It's just a plain object that has a type property, which is a string that defines the action that's taking place. And then it has an optional payload that your reducer function can use to construct the next state object for the store. Now our service class itself only has two properties. The state itself is our immutable data as an observable, and then our actions are an RxJS subject, which would just be a stream of the action class that we just created. To make this pattern super readable in the code, I'm going to create a custom RxJS operator that we can pipe into our action stream. Remember, the state is 100% determined by the actions, so we can say our state observable is equal to the actions, which will convert the actions to an observable, and then we can pipe in the reducer operator that we'll create here in the next step. RxJS has an operator called scan, which will allow you to accumulate values as they're emitted through the observable. 
To create a custom operator in RxJS, all you have to do is create a function that returns an existing operator such as scan. And scan provides two things. First, the accumulated object, which would be our current state, and also the current action that was emitted through the action stream subject. Now, the only thing we have to do is write some logic to return the next state based on these two input objects. Traditionally in Redux, this is done with a switch statement where we look at the action type and then perform some logic based on the type of action that was dispatched. But you don't necessarily have to do it this way. So if we have an action type of set, we'll go ahead and set the next state as the action payload, which will just overwrite everything in the state. Then if we have an update action, we'll go ahead and use the spread syntax to merge the payload object into the current state. That will give us a non-destructive update. Then if we're going to delete a property, we can use the lodash omit operator. That's a lot cleaner than trying to iterate through all the object keys on your own. So you could pass delete either an object property or an array of properties, and they would all be deleted from the state in that action. So that's all there is to it. We take the current state in the action and use it to compose the next state. But we're not quite done yet. We still need to set up a way to dispatch actions and also select a slice of the state. Dispatching an action is super easy. All we have to do is write a method here that takes an action as an argument, and then we'll go ahead and call actions next and push that next action to the stream. Now, when it comes to selecting data from the store, things get a little more tricky. The first issue we'll tackle is that this observable should be shared between all subscribers. In other words, we don't want to create a new observable every time a new subscription happens on the store. On top of that, we want to make sure that a new subscription always gets a value. When you have a hot observable and it receives a new subscriber, that subscriber won't receive any data that was emitted in the past. Well, fortunately, we can solve all these problems with one magical operator called share replay. This will ensure that all subscribers are sharing the same source state, and it will also save the last emitted state, so new subscribers will always get a value when they subscribe for the first time. Now, our last major hurdle is figuring out how to select a slice of the state or a nested object property and only listen to changes on that slice. Once again for that, I'm going to create my own custom RxJS operator. It takes the path as an argument, which is just a string and dot notation that points to the object property that you want to observe. And again, you don't have to make this a custom operator, I'm doing it strictly for code readability. It's going to take the current state observable and then map it down to a nested object property. Lodash has a git method that makes this super easy. So we just call git with the current state object and then the path string that we want to grab. Then as a third argument, we'll pass the default value if it doesn't exist, which can just be null. Now, normally this would emit the same object over and over again because this nested state is still tied to the parent observable. But we can create a really beautiful marriage between RxJS and Lodash here. We take the Rx distinct until changed operator, which will only emit unique values, but under the hood it's using the regular JavaScript equality operator. That'll work for plain numbers and strings, but it won't work for any objects that get emitted through the observable. But we can pass it the isEqual function from Lodash, which does a deep comparison on object properties. So now your sliced observable will only emit new values if the data that it's actually listening to changes. So that's pretty amazing for a single line of code. But now we're ready for the moment that you've all been waiting for, and that's wiring up Redux DevTools. If you don't have it installed yet, you can find it on the Chrome Web Store. And it's super easy to set up because under the hood, it's just using the same Redux pattern that we've already implemented in this app. We can interact with it on the window object in the browser. So I'll create a variable here for the window. Then when this service is constructed, I'll go ahead and set it up as a property on the window called DevTools, and then we can find the extension and call connect on it. Then the only thing left to do is pass it the current action and the state, which we already have in our reducer function. So we can simply call window DevTools send, pass it the action type, and the next state. And there's a bunch of ways you can customize and configure DevTools, this is just your most basic use case. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the fundamental principles behind Redux-style state management libraries like NGRX and NGXS. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about stuff like this to get your Angular app in production, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project support. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.